Now, in this lecture, we're going to talk about something called electrochemical cells, also known as galvanic cells. Now, recall that redox reactions are chemical reactions in which electrons flow from one atom to another. From physics, we know that moving charge, such as electrons, can be used to do useful work. Therefore, the flow of electrons found in redox reactions can somehow be transformed to do useful work. So an electrochemical cell is simply a way to capture this useful work produced by the movement of electrons from one atom to another. Now we're going to talk about special types of electrochemical cells called voltaic cells, also known as batteries. Now these types of cells contain oxidizing, reducing agent pairs connected by a conductor, such as a wire. And this conductor allows electrons to flow from one atom to a second atom. Now let's look at a layout of a voltaic cell. Voltaic cells are broken down into two half cells. So one half cell and a second half cell. In the first half cell, one half reaction takes place called oxidation and the second half reaction takes place in a second half cell called reduction. Now this wire connects the two cells and this wire is our conductor allowing electrons to flow. This is a light bulb that lights up when there is a flow of electrons. And this salt bridge becomes important in allowing these electrons to continually flow. Now let's look at this picture in more detail and let's see exactly what voltaic cells are and how they function. So let's examine the following redox reaction. So zinc solid reacts with aqueous copper to form aqueous zinc and solid copper. Notice that our zinc solid is oxidized. It loses two electrons to form a plus two ion, while those two same electrons are taken up by our copper molecule in the aqueous state. And so this guy is reduced from a plus two to a neutral atom. Now oxidation of zinc occurs in half cell number one. And zinc solid becomes zinc in the aqueous state with a plus two charge and it releases two electrons. While in half cell number two, reduction occurs. And aqueous copper takes up two electrons to form solid copper. So let's examine these reactions as they occur within our electrochemical cell, our voltaic cell. So in beaker number one, in half cell number one, this red bar corresponds to our zinc solid. So zinc solid releases two electrons and it also releases our zinc ion. Now this zinc ion is released into our solution from our metal bar. So this solution that has water as solvent increases in its concentration of zinc ion. And at the same time, it increases the positive charge found within our solution in beaker one, in half cell number one. Now these electrons travel through the conductor and across and into the other side. Now as it travels from this side to this side, this light bulb lights up and therefore this light bulb allows us to visualize the movement of these electrons. As soon as it lights up, we know that electrons are traveling from this side to this side. Now let's look at half cell number two. So this metal bar corresponds to our copper solid and what happens is these two electrons combine with uh, this copper ion found within the aqueous solution to form our copper solid. So in this solution, the copper ions move from in the solution to inside this metal bar. So our concentration of copper ions found in solution decreases. And that means our plus charge found in this solution also decreases. So now let's look at a few terms that we need to know. Electrodes are metals that conduct electrical current into out of the solution. So in this case, this is our electrode and this is our electrode. So our zinc solid and copper solid are our electrodes because they're metals that allow electrons to flow in or out. So the anode is defined to be the half cell where oxidation takes place. So the anode is this guy. 
It includes beaker 1, the aqueous solution, as well as the electrode found in beaker 1. The cathode is defined to be the half cell where reduction takes place. So this is our cathode. It includes the aqueous solution, the beaker, as well as the electrode found in beaker 2. And so, ele and so electrons travel from our anode to our cathode. Now let's look at the salt bridge. We still haven't discussed what this guy here is. This is our salt bridge. Now our salt bridge is composed of a solution of salt. For example, K2SO4. So what's the purpose, what's the function of our salt bridge? Well, let's look at this picture here. Eventually, when enough electrons travel to this location, what will happen to our positive charge in this beaker and our positive charge in this beaker? Well, we're going to have a buildup of positive charge in this beaker because this metal bar releases ions, right? While in this beaker, these ions down within our solution are taken up by this metal bar, meaning there's a decrease in positive charge found on this side. So eventually, if we don't have anything connecting them, like a salt bridge, the electrons will stop flowing. So, in order for the electrons to continue to flow, a, the circuit, this circuit must be closed. And it's closed using this salt bridge. And what happens is, this salt dissociates into K plus and SO4 minus ions, and the positively charged ions begin to flow into the second half cell, into the cathode. And this increases the positive charge found in this cathode, in this half cell 2. Now, the same happens with the SO-4. This guy begins to travel this way, decreasing the positive charge found in the anode in half cell number 1. And this allows the electrons to continually flow.